Angelique, I'm T. Live from the Shoe Chick Art Studio in fabulous downtown Las Vegas. And um, why is it the Shoe Chick uh, Art Studio? Well, um, I'm Angelique, also known as the Shoe Chick, because when you paint with me, kids in Africa get shoes. Today, we are painting the giraffe. I love this giraffe because it's so, I love like still wet paintings because um, they're so simple. And they're just like, what, four basic colors to this. Um, my objective is to take you about 90% through the painting, then you finish it on your own, and you post your masterpiece, and you email me, or you post them here on Facebook, and you tag me, or whatever it is you do, please include me in part of it, because that is what fills my spirit. So depending on how you got your kit, either you got your kit um, by pulling up to my studio in downtown Las Vegas, and uh, I delivered it to you curbside, um, or, or, you got it shipped to you. Yeah, I ship. And you're watching this on a YouTube tutorial. Any, either way you're doing it, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. But anyway, in your kit, you have this little reference photo for all you OCD people that are going to try to create it exactly like this. I'm going to tell you right now, I can't even create it exactly like this. Well, I could try, but I'm not going to stress myself out about it. I'm going to give you the basic fundamentals of painting this painting, and then you're going to finish the rest. So if you want to be, if you're like totally obsessed with creating it exactly the same way, use your reference photo to guide, guide, guide you through. And I will be referring to it from time to time, okay? So without further ado, because you know what, I will, I will just babble on forever. I do have a theme song. Y'all thought I forgot, didn't you? So everybody tell me I have been such a bright light in these dark, trying, uncertain times. Um, and that's how I started these virtual paint parties. And they said that I was such a bright light that, um, and thank me, I got lots of letters. And I, I didn't take that very lightly. It really filled my spirit. I was really surprised because it wasn't my intention. My intention was um, basically, it started a selfish reason to pay my rent in my studio. And it grew into so much more. So here's my theme song. It's this little light of mine. And you can sing along if you like. And I have a tambourine. Are you ready? Here we go. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Now that is a super big deal, because as you can see, I am not a singer. <laughs> but if it made you laugh today, it has served its purpose. If it made you smile, my hair is sticking up there, it's bothering me. But anyway, so I'm going to let my light shine during this next 30 minutes or so. I don't think it's going to take me that long to show you how to paint this painting. And you let your light shine as you share your pain with other people. Because you might not think much of this, but this is important. This is a masterpiece. This is going to be a representation of who you are in this moment, right? And one day, people are going to be fighting over this painting of yours. So I traced the draft for you. I hope you're not insulted. Sometimes I trace, sometimes I don't. Um, just depends on the difficulty of the painting. You did get an apron in your kit. You might want to put that on to protect your clothing. We're painting with acrylic paints. They wash very easily off your skin, not so easily out of your clothes, okay? So um, I love acrylic paints. They dry very quickly. They wash off your skin very quickly. If you get on the carpet or something, just try to wash it off right away. They're water-based paints, okay? So we have a cup of water. What you're going to do with that cup of water is you're going to put a light coat of water in your canvas. I'm going to refer to your brushes as the big brush. The biggest brush in your key kit either looks like this or this. I've been experimenting with this one, so we'll see how it goes. And then I'll say the flat brush, which looks like this. And then I'll say the pointy brush, which either looks like this or it is the smallest uh, brush in your kit for a little detail thing, okay? So um, I always have music and um, drinks, usually wine. But today, we're just going to paint. And you have your drinks and your wine wine ready. And just watch me and have a good time, okay? It's about the experience. Not going to learn anything fancy in my paint porter tutorials, okay? So I'm using a sponge brush. You can use this other brush if you have it. Like I said, I'm still experimenting with it. 
If you're using this one, you're gonna kind of pull all the pull on the bristles and make sure all the loose ones get out of there. That was the most annoying part to me. And the thing is, I just want to have a big brush for coverage for you, okay? I am turning that painting around at the bottom because I don't want to mess it up as I start painting. <clears throat> but I need to have it high enough so you can see. Okay, light cold water. Don't be afraid of washing off the trace lines because they're not going to wash away. They're a little bit more than just pencil. Um, the reason why I put the light coat of water is to activate or prime the canvas so it's ready to accept paint. So that that first coat of paint just doesn't get sucked into the canvas, okay? Sometimes people treat their canvases by painting. They do painting a white coat on beforehand, or um, they use uh, a, a material called gesso to uh, prep the canvas. But we're in a paint party, paint and set world. We just use a light coat of water to kind of prep our canvas, okay? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to paint the background first. Looking at my reference photo, it's um, orange and yellow. And if you look at your paint kit, you don't have orange. You have red and yellow, though, and that makes it orange. But what we're going to do first is we're going to paint the background entirely yellow. Then we're going to blend in that red to make orange, OK? So I want you to take a look at the reference photo. And there's a little protected space of white of right, that's like the sunset, around the giraffe. So I just want you to take the biggest brush and kind of make sure we protect by making this little circle area for the sunset, okay? So hope you can see that. You can see that pretty good. And then we're just gonna paint the whole canvas yellow, okay? And I know you're like, really? Yes, really. Because we're going to blend in we're going to blend in the red at the top and drag it down throughout the painting to make orange. Now I'm using really long broad strokes. If your paint's sticky, you're going to add a little bit of water. If your canvas was drippy, like that, just to put a little bit of water on it, if your canvas is drippy, you have a blue paper towel. Looks like this. You're going to dab your canvas off a little bit because you don't want it to be dripping. We just want to activate it just a little bit, okay? So I'm using the sponge brush again. If you have that other brush, use the other brush. I'm lightly going over my giraffe. You're not going to wash away the trace lines. You're going to be able to see actually those trace lines through the yellow. And we are even going to paint the sides, like I always say, so that you can hang your masterpiece up and you will not need a frame. So all I'm doing is painting yellow. I'm going kind of fast. And, um, you know, you can always watch the replay if you want too fast. But don't be afraid, it's just yellow. We're not gonna take it all the way down to the bottom. If you see, as you can see, there's a line right here because that's where the grass is gonna go. So I want you to stop right about there, okay? Long, broad, even strokes. You can have a little white still showing through if you want, I don't want. I'm gonna make sure that I cover all the white. And then over on the other side of my giraffe and make sure I fill in that sun. Okay. How cool is that? That looks pretty freaking easy, right? That was fun. I like that yellow. All right. So yellow on my brush. I hope you're caught up. If you're not caught up, take your time. Don't worry. Just take a look and see what I'm doing for the next step. The next step that I'm doing is I'm not even going to wash my brush off. I'm going to dip it into my water just a little bit. 
I'm going to go into my red paint. And if you look at the painting, it's pretty solid at the top in terms of how much red is at the top, right? Like African sky. So I'm going to use my brush. I'm even going to paint the sides just a little bit at the top. And I'm going to put quite a solid coat of red at the top here. And I don't have that much left on my brush, and look what I'm going to do. I'm just going to drag it through. And look at your effort statement. It kind of drags all the way through, doesn't it? I'm going to curve my brush a little bit around the sun. Now that looks pretty funky, right? That's a technical term for it. <laughs> I'm going to go into my yellow, and I'm going to go right over those clumpy brush strokes because I want to even it out. So between a little bit of water and yellow paint, I'm dripping a little bit, but I'm going to catch it and blend it in. Look how that's blended, ladies, like eyeshadow. You'll see the effect once you start playing around with it. See that orange, how it's making orange? Don't like it? Put a little bit more yellow on your brush. So not one reason why I can't make the painting exactly, exactly the same is because I'm painting sideways, right? I just want to give you the best possible angle possible without um, having an assistant. Sometimes I have an assistant, but I don't have an assistant today. I'm actually lifting it up a little bit because it looks like it's a little off center. Oh, it is because my legs are like to the bottom. <laughs> okay. Using my yellow, blending, blending, blending. I kind of like the way my legs. So you keep just kind of playing around with it till you get the effect that you want. Okay? And I'm going to put a little extra red on the top. I still have a white wash on my brush, okay? I want it to be darker at the top, so. Acrylic paints look better, brighter, bolder as you let them dry and apply another coat. So it's kind of dry up there right now. So that's why when I put this red up here this time, it's giving a much more vibrant effect. Wouldn't you agree? And I'm doing the sides because it looks kind of cool when you hang it up and you get the sides painted just a little bit red. Again, blending because I don't want it to look too stripy. So I'm blending it in at the top. I'm going to put a little bit more red because I don't want to really see too much yellow at the top. I want it to be pretty red. Pretty opaque, as they say. Meaning no other color coming through. Okay. So, I don't know how you're feeling about yours. It sometimes takes a little while. We can come back to that. Remember the trees, actually, if you look at the reference photo, the tree's going to cover up a lot of your blending things. If you're not still not quite happy with it. If you're going to paint with me a lot, I always say invest in a good paintbrush set. One that has a big one. And then, you know, some flat ones and some round ones. Play around with them. That's how you get better, right? I'm going to put a little bit of red around here. I'm just going to do a few brush strokes for my ray. And I'm going to clean those up a little bit with white paint later when we get to that. Get to that. All right, what's next? All right, so we're pretty much done with this paintbrush, but um, I don't like how that looks over. But there's a lot of area down here, and we have to paint that black. So what I'm going to do is it's going to be messy. Um, you can use your um, you can use the smaller paintbrush if you want to do the bottom so you don't get messy, but I don't want to do that. I'm using this paintbrush. And what I'm going to do is, this is really gross, but I'm going to swish my paintbrush. I'm using a sponge, but you can use this one. If you're using this one, 
one, switch it around. It's not as messy if you have the other one. Then you're gonna squeeze out the water if you have a sponge brush. If you don't have, if you have the other brush, you're just gonna tap it out. Then you're gonna take that blue paper trap towel that I dropped on the floor that I could get. Ugh. And you're going to dry it off just a little bit. Then you're gonna go into your black paint. And what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna paint the grass black. The silhouette of the grass, right? I want my brush to be pretty dry because I want the grass to be very opaque because it's a it's a sunset. I mean it's a silhouette. So I am taking my sponge brush. And if it's doing weird things and you can't control it, just use I'm using the tip of my paintbrush. Of the sponge brush. Because it starts getting weird. We don't need it to do anything fancy. We just need it to cover up the space black. So anybody know any fun facts about grass? <laughs> Tallest animal on the planet. Can run up to 35 miles an hour. Spends most of his life standing up, even gives birth standing up. Okay. Again, if your spin brush is doing weird stuff like mine is, you can't control it, just switch to a different brush. Just switch to that medium sized brush. I think I, when I was squeezing it out, I was kind of maybe it a little bit, <laughs> which is not good. All right, but I can work with it. But if it's doing one of things, you can also use your flat brush, which I'm going to switch to right now because my sponge brush is doing weird things. And I'm using that flat tip brush to kind of even out everything. I'm resting my sponge brush. If you're using a sponge brush, I'm resting it on my tray, not in the water. This line doesn't have to be exactly straight. We're going to create some blades of grass with that fine, fine tooth, fine um, tooth, not tooth, fine brush, a pointed brush. I keep saying tooth. Okay. So when I'm doing the grass, I want to make sure it connects with the yellow, but there's no gap, no white space in between. Paint the sides. See, like how I'm painting the sides, I want to show you this because it's kind of cool. So the side is going to be black and at the top it's going to be dark. You're going to do the same on the other side, I just can't reach over there, but you should be doing the same on the other side. So I'll wrap your opinion so when you, when you hang it up, it looks really cool and finished. This is a fun family painting, gender neutral, right? Boys and girls can paint this. I do this a lot with mixed groups. All right, my grass is done. Isn't this so cool? I'm just like, it's coming to life already, right? All right, so you might have a piece of chalk in your um, kit. If you don't have a piece of chalk, you can kind of just freehand this next part. I have a piece of chalk. I hope that I put one in your kit. If I didn't, you get a piece of chalk. <laughs> or just use a brush, okay? So you're gonna go about we're doing a tree now, about three fingers over, about one inch over from the end. And you're gonna draw a line straight up from the tree, for the tree, okay? Now, the, the base of that tree is um, about as tall as your giraffe. And then we're gonna draw the clusters of leaves. And there's one, two, three, there's like seven of them on here. But I think what's most important when you draw the tree is we're just gonna do ovals. I want a big, long oval on the top, okay? And then I want to stagger two more. And then I see one closer to its face a little bit. I want the tree to be taller than the giraffe, of course, right? So just kind of stagger your clusters of where your leaves are going to go. All right? 
Now let's say you don't have chalk. If you don't have chalk, you're just going to take your black paint. You're going to go about an inch over from the side. You're going to just take that flat brush, draw yourself a line. And you're going to take that flat brush and you're going to draw yourself some circles for your leaves, your clusters of leaves. So I'm going to go back to using um, that sponge brush that you have, if you had a sponge brush. Um, whatever your biggest brush is for coverage, and I'm going to fill in these clusters of leaves on the tree. Don't have to be perfect, just need to fill them in. But there are no mistakes. If you're having problems using a sponge brush, I'm looking for my blue paper towel that I dropped earlier. Yep, on the floor again. <laughs> okay, so we're going back to this. No, I'm going to use my sponge brush. The reason why we use a sponge brush again is for coverage. So if you don't feel comfortable with it or if it's doing weird things, you can go back to the flat brush. I'm just going to fill in this face, and then I'm going to do all the fancy stuff, making it really look like a tree, connecting all the clusters and all that good stuff. So if you're having problems doing the oval, you can just do lines, just connect them, you know, broad brush strokes and connect them. I'm doing that. I'm not going like this. I'm just making, just basically filling it in, coloring it in, but we're painting. Sometimes I say that to people, painting is just like coloring. It's just that you're using a paintbrush. Relax and enjoy the flow of the paint. All right, all filled in. If you want to make more clusters, make more. If you want to make less, make less. Okay, so putting that sponge brush aside, using my flat tip paintbrush, I'm going to finish the painting. I'm going to show you how to build up the tree, and um, yeah, let's just do it. I'm going to make it thicker using the fat of my paint, the flat of my paint, paintbrush, and not using the the tip. I'm using the flat of my paintbrush. I'm looking at that tree and it's a little like, it's straight on one side and then it's like bumpy on the other side. Anybody know what kind of tra tree this is? You find this tree in Africa a lot. I actually looked it up. It's called a Akash, Akashi, Acacia tree, A-C-A-C-I-A. -A -A. I thought that was a neat little, you know, I'm trying to hit you with some fun facts here. <laughs> and of course, giraffes are herbivores. They only eat plants. Spend a lot of time protecting their young. Um, I want to know a fun fact about giraffes I thought was really cool. Even though the, the blue whale is the largest animal on the planet, the giraffe has the biggest heart. Isn't that cool? Because they need a big heart to pump from their main part of their body to, for the blood to get to their brain because they're so tall. Anyway, and you thought this was just going to be a paint brush. <laughs> okay, so there's a few bumps in the tree, and I'm just going to take the tip of my bank brush and make a few bumps and knots in the tree. And then this little point is sticking out right there. You see that in your tree? No trees are alike. You can make it any way you want. I would recommend making the trunk of the tree thin because that's a characteristic of a tree like this, right? Then I'm taking the very tip of my paintbrush and I'm going to draw some lines just connecting the clusters. Okay? And if you're not quite sure what I mean, just take a look at your reference photo. So, and they're slanted, straight. Now, if I was trying to match this um, 
reference photo, that's quite a few lines to try to keep track. Now how do we get the tree to look like a tree? I mean the leaves on the tree to look like leaves on a tree. Well with this paintbrush, I'm gonna go into my black paint and I'm gonna dab around the edges to create some texture in the tree. I'm gonna do a couple of these. I'm not gonna do all of them. But just so you know how to do it. So I'm just dabbing along with the tip of my paintbrush and kind of turning it back and forth. You'll see what I mean once you start working around one of the clusters of leaves. Again, this is a silhouette, so you don't want any of the orange to, to come through on the painting. Okay? You want to make sure that you are covering the orange, maybe if, even if you have to put another coat on there. It's kind of fun as this little tree starts coming to life. Just tapping around the edges. Now with the same brush, I'm going to use that to color in, paint in, not color, <laughs> paint in my giraffe. So when I'm painting my giraffe, I'm going to outline him first and paint him in. These are his legs, I'm gonna finish that up. Outline with a very, very small amount of paint on your paintbrush. Takes a bit of a steady hand. And then paint him in. It really is coming to life, isn't it? Again, a silhouette, so you don't want the giraffe to have any white spaces coming through them, right? Sometimes I think face eyes are going just a little bit too fast. And I want to encourage you maybe to watch the video full, watch my videos all the way through, get the concept, and then paint with me, or pause me. You can also find my videos on YouTube under Angelique Paints. That's my channel. I think I have about 20 videos. <laughs> Maybe not that many, but quite a few tutorials. And you can always get the paint kits from me for just, they're 20 bucks now. Look how just filling that in really brings the painting back, brings the paintings a lot. Now you got some work to do because you got to work around all those trees, make them look cool, then fill in the giraffe. Then I'm taking my little tiny, tiny, my pointy paintbrush. And if you take a look at the giraffe, he has horns on him. He has ears on him. And that's what you're going to use. The horns and the ears are separate. Did you know that? The horns are used for fighting. But you're going to use that little, the pointiest, the smallest paintbrush that you have to add those details to the giraffe. We, I didn't um, insult you and add his tail on there because I figured you could pretty much do the tail yourself. I'm doing that with the paintbrush, with the fine tip paintbrush. The other thing you want to do with this fine tooth paintbrush is you want to give yourself some grass down here. And all I'm doing is putting little lines in the grass. The very, very, very last color that we use is white. So when I put these lines in the grass, I'm making bees. I'm making bees and I'm making little lines make it look like blades of grass. So bees here and there, and then just little lines to make it look like grass. Look how cool it looks! And you got a lot of work to do though. It's not done. A paint party usually is about two hours. I think it takes really about three hours to get one of these paintings. So you like it? I see a little white coming through there, so I want to fix that. 
All right, okay, so white paint. White paint is last, okay? And what we're gonna do with the white paint is we're gonna soften our glow up, our sunset up a little bit. So I took this uh, medium brush, a flat brush, and swishing it around in my water. I'm wiping it off on my paper towel. I'm going into my white paint just a little bit. You know, wiping it off on my paper towel because I don't want that much white. And I want to lighten up this line right here between the white and the color to create kind of like a glowing effect. I'm curving my break, my paintbrush to get a different brush stroke to make it look like it's glowing. Soften up those lines. If it's still, if it's not looking how you want to, if it's looking a little choppy, put a little bit of water on your paintbrush. Oops, I have black on there. I didn't. If your water's yucky, it's okay. Just make sure you wipe it off in your paper towel today. You got a little black in there. So my paintbrush is a little damp, a little wet, with some light paint. That's how I'm getting the blending. Let's say I have too much white and I want a little bit more yellow in there. Go into your yellow paint again. Soften the line up with a little bit of uh, yellow paint. And just kind of play around with it a little bit to get that glowing effect that you want, okay? I like it. This painting is nowhere near done. Got to work on that glow a little bit. Got to work on my tree, my clusters of leaves a little bit. And then a little finishing touch to your uh, tree, to the leaves. is going to make a little gray. So you can lift a little bit of white paint out of your cup and a tiny, tiny bit of black and mix it in your mixing tray. Show you what that looks like. See, I just took a little bit, mix it in my mixing tray, I'm making gray. And just along the edges of my tree, and if you take a look at your reference photo, you can see a little bit. I'm just gonna add a little bit of white around my tree clusters of leaves. And then I'm gonna go over again with black. And it adds like a nice little texture effect. I don't know if my camera is picking it up for you. But when you do it, you will understand what I'm talking about. And it creates a little texture effect in the leaves of the tree. Again, this painting is nowhere near done. Well, kind of. It's 90% done. That's what I'm trying to take you. Work on the leaves, work on your tree, work on finishing the lines up, making them nice and uh, smooth, clean lines on your giraffe. And um, I think that pretty much concludes this tutorial. The giraffe! I hope you have fun. Please post, please tag me, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're watching me on that. Thank you so much. Be safe. And I appreciate you. Bye-bye.